live from Orlando, Florida. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube. Covering Pentaho World 2015. Now your hosts, Dave Vellante and George Gilbert. This is George Gilbert. I'm co-hosting with Dave Vellante. We're at Pentaho World 2015. We're here live collecting the signal from the noise. And we're uh, very honored to have as our guest Will Gorman, who's VP of Labs at Pentaho. Will, welcome. Well, thank you, George. It's great so, to be here. So tell us a, a little, um, I mean, all of us techies can imagine what it means to be VP of Labs, but fill in the holes for us. Give us some of the color. A absolutely. So uh, Pentaho Labs is the innovation arm of Pentaho. We focus on emerging technologies and use cases and build prototypes, examples, to demonstrate uh, to customers and to ourselves what may take hold in the market. So we work really closely with engineering and product management on helping to find that roadmap for innovation. So this would be things where if product management is worried about, okay, what do we need to get out in the next release? Um, you're focused a little further beyond. Absolutely. How to, you know, yep. what's bubbling up that will be relevant. Absolutely, and, and we'll be the first uh, to evaluate a new technology, whether it's our community and customers that bring that to our attention, or, or the market at large that we recognize, hey, there's this new technology we need to see, is it something we need to integrate with? Or, or a new algorithm or a new uh, approach to data analytics. Yeah. Would, it be, would it also extend to customers bumping into problems or anticipating customers bumping into use cases that they don't yet see the limits of and product management being focused a little nearer term, you know, where you have to see, okay, what's the next leap that's going to get us into a, a broader set? Absolutely. So, so as an example, we work very closely with our big data customers who are uh, pushing the envelope around Spark and, and SQL on Hadoop to figure out what, what are the right technology investments that they could make and that we can make, and how, do, how does Pentaho fit into that architecture? Okay, great example, because you know, Spark, is, Spark is very current right now. Our yep. actually latest just out uh, survey shows that um, um, of customers who have, been ex who, who have both Hadoop and Spark, um, their choice, the reason for choosing uh, Spark um, is 91% higher performance and 60% uh, greater simplicity. Ease of use for yeah, the developers. Yeah, ease of use, Absolutely. yes. So when you see customers um, who are pushing the envelope with, with big data and they're interested in Spark, how would you meld those two with the current you know, product line? Absolutely, so in uh, Pentaho 5.4 we actually, as part of Labs transition into the roadmap, we released orchestration for Spark. So if you already have a team of developers building Spark jobs, you can incorporate that into your data pipeline with Pentaho. Where we're headed though is a much deeper integration with Pentaho and Spark. So building the, taking the ability to visually describe a transformation and execute within Spark. And that's where we're really headed. So utilizing the Spark engine uh, RDDs and, and the great operations that you have in Spark and allow you to visually design and, and build those experiences. So in other words, it would be, um, it would be the Pentaho GUI environment yeah, as exactly. a development tool and Spark is the invisible engine underneath. Absolutely, and we, we've done this before with MapReduce. So we have what's known as Visual MapReduce. It's been around for, right. it's been out for over five years at Pentaho and it's a great technology, but as, as you know, uh, Spark is starting to replace a lot of the MapReduce use cases. Well, who are your peeps? Who are my peeps? Yeah, developers, I, are they? Oh, uh, okay, great. Well, James was just up here on stage. James is a peep, right? So we, uh, I work very closely with the developers within the big data space. So partners, so whether it's Cloudera Engineering, Vertica, um, Hortonworks, I work closely with the engineering teams in those groups uh, to make sure that the technologies can align and work together. Also, uh, within Pentaho, uh, my team uh, consists of Mark, Dr. Mark Hall, uh, founder, uh, one of the creators of Weka and maintainer of Weka, and, as well as Matt Caster, who's the founder and creator of Kettle. Uh, so that's, that's my team, that's, that's who we are. So, the developer world is pretty jazzed about containers. What's going <laughs> yes. on with containers? Well, we're jazzed about containers too. Uh, our engineering team loves Docker. They love uh, the agility 
of being able to quickly deploy any version of Pentaho um, and test and validate you know, their changes and, and as they evolve our architecture, right? And we're also seeing early customers adopt Docker, uh, but there, there are still limitations, right? Uh, there are security concerns and, you know, uh, and those are things that are being worked out as a community, right, in, in the open. And Pentaho definitely sees Docker. We, uh, it was earlier this year we met with our strategic advisory board and Docker was their number one uh, item on, on their agenda. They wanted to make sure that it was in our, in our future. And we, a number of our developers have already blogged about how would you integrate Pentaho with Docker? How do you deploy Pentaho with Docker? So there's some great stuff out there early, but. but so what important. do you tell them? What do I tell them? Yeah. I, I think Docker is great, I, but it's emerging, right? So similar to Spark and a lot of these new technologies, uh, depending on your uh, relative, uh, um, your conservatism with technology, you have to decide, is this ready for prime time yet? And you have to test, right? That's in, in the open, because there's so many great technologies, you have to explore and test it before you put it into production. But we, we do have customers that have put uh, Pentaho and Docker into production. And we had some great talks uh, yesterday around Docker on the edge. So running uh, Pentaho, lightweight kettle engine, on Raspberry Pi and do with Docker, huh. uh, and, and the deployment is just so much easier, right? Uh, so it's, it's a great technology. What are some of the, well, you know, we, we were just talking about um, going beyond what sort of the state of the art is right now in terms of uh, sort of the analytic data pipeline, something our customers tell us about and that we've sort of distilled is you know, richer set of analytics, Lower latency, in other words, yes. faster time to decision. Absolutely. Is that, are those the two sort of directions customers are pushing you in? We're, um, the custom, customers and the industry too, the yeah. new use cases. Yes. IOT as an example, as we heard about in the keynotes yeah. this week. Um, IOT is moving you into closer to real time, yep. so uh, streaming analytics, as well as, I mean, just the fact that the data sizes are so large, the need for algorithms, for uh, machine learning to analyze that data versus the traditional OLAP and manual experiences that we had in the past. And so, how does that translate into what you guys are looking at in labs, and then how will that translate into the product line? A absolutely, so one example is Pentaho's data science pack, which was born in the labs uh, as initially as Weka and R integration. And right now we're brewing up Python uh, integration as well. So if you have Python developers building algorithms and you want to incorporate those into your data pipelines, you can do that through Pentaho. Okay. And um, uh, just at the risk of, of dropping in the weeds a little bit, yeah, yeah. The, um, the Internet of Things, um, the volume of data, and, and uh, having to do the machine learning on it, should we, should we take it to mean that you don't have time to store it all up and then you know, sort of learn what's in there? Is it that you have to learn in real time? Well, I think it's a mix of both. Okay. Um, so there's, absolute, there's always going to be historical analysis, and it's going to be critical. And uh, as the Lambda architecture uh, demonstrates, right, you need that historical and real-time perspective. Rem rem remind, oh, for our uh, audience apologize. at home, you know, the, yes, uh, the, it's, the don't try this at home crowd. <laughs> the lam uh, Lambda architecture is taking the algorithms that you build for real-time and historical and, and combining those together to solve big data problems. Okay, okay. So, um, and we see, you, know, you can build real-time use cases with Spark streaming, and then you can do historical analysis with Spark as a developer, for instance. But the BI tools, the higher level tools for uh, business users, they're not there yet, right? So they're evolving into that, but uh, we're still working towards that ease of use, right? That ability to make it easy for folks. So, um, th there's, if I hear you right, it sounds like in the plumbing, we know what we need to do in terms of we need to be able to take the, the, the real time or near real time data and we need to take the stuff in the, in the lake that's history yep. and we need to sort of take lessons from both in Absolutely. the form of models. But it, in terms of translating that up into the user interface of what someone sees, whether it's Weka yeah, yeah. or, or whatever Or visualization. Tools, whatever yeah. visualization. Yeah. I assume that's part of your charter because if we're working in the plumbing, at some point, the user has to see it. Absolutely, so what, in what addition to the plumbing like? work uh, yeah. where we live, we also focus on what's the user experience. A, how do they build it? Yeah. And then B, how do they get uh, results out of it? So what's, what's the final visualization or experience that will meet the business needs? So in, in that sense, uh, as real time enters the picture, it's going to be a combination 
of real time, basically, and historical data viewed together uh, for that entire context of whatever the business problem happens to be. Let's take predi predictive maintenance as an example. Yep. Let's say you're streaming in real time uh, the behavior of vehicles, your, your fleet, but something goes wrong. You want to not only see that behavior right at that moment, streaming real time, but you also want to look at the historical experience to see, oh, is this a common occurrence or is this, uh, is this a new anomaly? Right? Or did you see something show up that we didn't look for yeah, on this truck? Yeah, exactly, and, and maybe when you go back into history, you'll say, oh, this was here, the pattern was there, okay. we just missed it. So Speaking, that, yep. oh, go ahead, sorry. No, Speaking go of ahead. visualization, what kind of innovations are going on in the lab with regard to visualization? Well, absolutely, so right now the, um, the focus for Pintaho is really around API, so making sure that whatever visualization library, whatever visualization experience that your, cus your company needs, uh, we can support that through our rich uh, APIs. We also have our own open source visualization environment called uh, Community um, Chart Components, which allows uh, very rich uh, access to the APIs and the ability to visualize about in any way you'd like. So where, where we innovate there, especially James, who's up on stage, he's, he's sort of our best visualizer, he'll uh, take, you know, let's say it's a map or a, a building a diagram and then translate that to SVG and, and make it and turn it into a dynamic experience that can really bring home that data to the, to the business. So, um, where, what, what type of problems would we expect to see, let's say in three plus years, Pentaho solving, that today people assume you, know, you really need a Hadoop type platform for, in that you're adding yeah. You're, you're making a, a more coherent platform, you know, where end-to-end -end sure. integrated rather than a couple dozen sort of loosely connected projects. Well, so Pentaho definitely wouldn't uh, be where we're at without great partners like Hadoop and NoSQL environments. We're not a database, it's we're not a processing engine. We try to make those a much more easy, cohesive experience. But we also, you know, we, we truly believe and see in the enterprise, there, it, there is no single instance of Hadoop. Right? There are heterogeneous environments. Um, you have your Hadoop environment now, and, and a lot of enterprises have multiple Hadoop environments already. So you need a way to blend that data to, to have an, a cohesive orchestration throughout your data pipeline. And uh, I, I think that's where Pintao can really add the glue, right, to that entire uh, heterogeneous environment. So it will be um, adding functionality so that you can continue to be the end-to-end -end Analytic data pipeline. A absolutely. That's so the continuing core. to invest in big data orchestration. Um, you're seeing emerging investment around IoT, and then also embedded analytics. So being able to bring the analytics to the business problem. Right. Right now, most analytics are out of you know desktop tools or out of the box tools that aren't necessarily associated with a business problem in in an operation. But we've really embraced uh, operational analytics. Uh, bringing uh, the analytics to that use case. I, I, Will, I want to give you the, the last word, but I have to ask one last question, which sure. is, um, as we see the need to bring the analytics closer and closer to the operational applications, yes. and maybe not all operational applications are going to be in the Hadoop op operational databases like HBase or yep. whatever, how do you get closer to the traditional operational applications? So, uh, you know, a lot of the operate, new operational technologies today are Mongo, right? Uh, they're okay, based on the, the new SQL, okay. how, or no SQL, whatever you want to call it, Cassandra okay. and Mongo. And those, we have just as much investment in those technologies as we do in Hadoop. Okay. So we need to make sure to continue to work with the operational stores as well as the analytical stores. All right, yep. if we were to ask you to leave, cus you, you know, Pentaho customers yeah. who don't have the privilege of getting your autograph live here <laughs> after the panel, uh, what, what do you want to leave them with? Well, one thing we, we didn't get to talk about too much is Pentaho Labs is a small team, as I mentioned, but we're now part of Hitachi, and I have access to uh, over uh, 400 data scientists in the Hitachi Labs. Big lab. So it's a big lab, <laughs> and I've been working with them. There, there are a number of the data scientists here at this show, and uh, it just, it's wonderful, and there's opportunities now that are endless in that sense for them to embrace Pintao and also to contribute because we're a community. Right. And, that, and that's the fundamental uh, belief of Pintao is that we're open community, so. Okay, with that, uh, Will Gorman, thank you. Great, thank you. Um, we are going to sign out, we'll be back in a few minutes. This is George Gilbert co-hosting with Dave Vellante at Pintao World 2015, thanks.